Welcome to the Spooky Screen, a show where friends get together and talk about random crap about movies and TV shows. Uh, there's usually five of us. We've lost another this week. Johnny is still MIA. He's trapped in Miami. And <laughs> for the foreseeable future, we have no idea when he'll return. Uh, Steven is also out. He is a regular, but he was too cool for us today. So it's just us three. I got my hosts, Nick, David, hey everyone, and I am Noah. We are going to be running through a bunch of topics because we're shaking things up. We're going to be talking about the idol, Indiana Jones 5, James Gunn saying superhero movies suck, and then casting the new superhero to the new Superman directly <laughs> after that. Uh, the One Piece live action is going to be amazing, right, Nick? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Oppenheimer, uh, Nolan hints at the Oppenheimer ending, and the Evil Dead franchise. David's going to talk about that. So we got a lot to talk about tonight. We're going to be kind of going through it quick, but stick around. The first thing I would like, we'd like to talk about is everyone's favorite TV show, The Idol. <laughs> this week on The Idol... It's been canceled by H. Well, according to news sources, it's been canceled by HBO. And the new thing is that its episodes have been reduced down to from six to five, <laughs> which both are lies. So if you hear those in the news, just disregard them. People hate this show so much that they're just trying to eliminate it from existence for some reason. Uh, I watched episode four. It was good. It's not a masterpiece but it is not as terrible as people want you to believe um it's to me it's become more of like a horror you know slant and i think that's where people's minds have kind of they kind of can't wrap their minds around it because they came into the show thinking it was something else and now it's kind of revealing what it truly is I am surprised that it's five episodes. I think that is way too short, especially where episode four left off. It felt like we have so much story to tell. So it, it's so it's not a lie. Well, the lie here is people say HBO has reduced the episode count from six to five because of the backlash, and that is not true. Originally, when they when they um, you know, when they bought the show or whatever, they planned the show. It was supposed to be six episodes. And that was back with the previous director. And the new director came in and said, I want five episodes, not six. So he technically mm. reduced it before it even came into production. Supposedly. Again, this is all legit. But that's what is, I guess, you know, take what you want. Yeah. I don't think they would cut a, a one episode because of backlash that makes no sense just means you're just going to end like if you film the episode just show yeah, it. Really. Who cares? like that makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever so whatever the idol is a completely fine show it's I, i'm not going to recommend it because it's you know lots of sex and nudity but i don't think it's as awful as you may have heard what would you say if this was like hbo's marketing plan like what if they were the ones uh, drumming up all of this like drama and everything to make it seem bigger than it really is so that way people could just be like oh my goodness all those things like because that might you know any press any publicity is good publicity you know so like yeah what if that was their plan all honestly along? nick if that was their plan it's genius because it worked because if you this is like one of the most talked about shows of the year and like of recent years past is like incredibly the amount of coverage this show gets is insane it might be bad coverage but it gets lots of coverage yeah, it gets, I feel like it gets more people watching because I want to see it. Like, I want to see how bad this really is. Yeah, especially in the last episode. I typed in the last episode, and all these weird articles came up about how like the torture scene in the last episode was a new low, or that it was despicable. And I just think, have people have these people have never seen a horror movie? Like or basically, Game of right? Thrones. Basically, right. the <laughs> gist of it is the guy gets his he they're trying to get him to tell the truth and they're shocking him with a dog collar. That yeah. is all that happens. And is that really the, it? Because that's I mean, like, all Game, it is. Game of Thrones. They cut off a man's penis. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> and they hint that he's eating it for dinner. Like, 
I don't know. We need a little just, chop sound. No, it wouldn't make sense. Penis. <laughs> I really don't get the skirts in the like your church skirts in a bunch. You know, like yeah. it's it's really weird in my opinion. But I don't know if you've never if you've seen a Saw movie, then you've seen way worse than the Idol. So I don't I don't even yeah Game of Thrones. So let's move on from the Idol. Let's talk about Indiana Jones Five. It comes out this weekend. Are either of you gonna see it? Is any of us gonna see? It? Are you excited? Like I haven't heard much about it. Is it? Is it like a reboot? I know it's a sequel. It's a sequel with Harrison Ford. Yeah, it's like the Shia LaBeouf's not in it, right? No, no, they they don't want you to know he exists. Oh, okay. Yeah, but... <laughs> so the Crystal Aliens movie didn't happen. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, erased. Okay. The Crystal Skull has been erased. Okay. <laughs> So, I don't know if I want to, but I feel obligated just for the fact that, like, Harrison Ford is, like, 80 years old still doing this. And that kind of just makes me want to see it in and of itself. Like, give credit to where credit's due. Like, Harrison Ford's still pumping them out like it's nothing. So, like, old man respect? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I want to I gotcha. see some, uh, I want to see some bad, uh stunt CGI. double cutaways no i don't want to see yeah i just want them to like shoot the back of harrison ford but it's obviously like a 30 year old shredded dude yeah, i can almost i can almost guarantee you that 95 percent of the movie is probably gonna be that it's gonna be harrison's ford face just cgi cgi onto some drip dude's body whipping he's got to eventually get killed off in one of these movies don't you think like i mean Maybe. he did it in a respectful way in star wars you got to imagine he's got to do no one to call yeah. it for indiana jones I, mean, I would love if he ended like the, the movie ended it with him going into a retirement home I have a feeling this is how the, this movie's going to end, because even the trailers make it seem like he's kind of sick and tired of being Indiana Jones. That's kind of like Harrison Ford, like actual Harrison Ford. He seems like he's sick and tired of being in movies. He just wants yeah, to retire. Right? <laughs> he's just like, right? He's like, every time I'm saying I'm retired, they're like, come on, Harrison, please. <laughs> he's revisiting all his old characters just to get them killed off. He's like, all right, I'll be on Solo. Right? You gotta kill me. He's like, Disney keeps writing me checks, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Stop writing me checks. I'll do this, but I'm dying in the movie. And they're just like, ah, crap. He's like, that, he's like, that way no one can ever have a potential for a sequel with me in it ever again. Now, now if you had a fan recast for Indiana Jones, like, if they're going to continue Indiana Jones after this, who would you want? Name one person. Oh, the guy who played Don Draper, I think, would do a good job. Okay. Oh, uh, what's his Hamm? name? John Hamm. John Hamm. I think he'd be a good Indiana Jones, honestly. Okay. okay. He would. He'd probably love that you say that. He's waiting at the phone right now. <laughs> right? He's just like, come on, call me, please, please, please. He answers the phone. He's just like, he's, he's talking to his wife, and he's just like, yes, I'll be the next thing you Jones. Oh, hi, honey. Hmm. Do you not have a recast, David? I don't know. Let me let me think about it. Oh, I, I, David, once we move on, that's it. Oh, okay, You're cut okay. off. <laughs> Give me someone that you love personally. I'm drawing a blank. Okay, David doesn't want anyone cast as Indiana Jones. He wants it to end here, right? See, what the viewers don't know is that even though it looks like David's looking off screen to think, he's really looking at his Harrison Ford shrine, and he's like, no one can replace you, Harry. <laughs> I was going to say, short round should yeah. take up the mantle of Indiana Jones, and it should be Key Hugh Kwan. He should be the next Indiana Jones. Oh, my God. I would 100% watch that movie. You know what I would love if that were the case? I need him to just walk. So Indiana Jones is going to go through a temple as an old man, and he's going to like start having heart attacks like Joel in The Last of Us. And right when he's at his dying breath, K. Hey Kwan's like short round's going to come up out of nowhere and just be like, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Dr. Jones. Yeah, Jones. And be like, he'd be like, short round, it's all on you now. He's like, actually, that's not my name. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Here, take the whip. You're Indiana Jones now. <laughs> now change your name to Indy. <laughs> all right, let's move on from Indiana Jones. I guess we're all seeing it, right? Um, now I kind of want. I, 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 I kind of did. I wasn't gonna see it, but now I feel like uh, I want to see it now. Yeah, honestly, I, I I think I'll I will end up seeing it. All right, do you think you'll like it? Uh, don't, let's not let's right, not get too excited here. Better, better than the Crystal Skull, probably. Right? Anything is going to be better than the, 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 the yeah. uh, I'm gonna hold you to that, Nick. I'm gonna hold you to that. The atomic bomb proof refrigerator. He got in the fridge and it saved him from a nuclear blast. <laughs> yeah. 
which Christopher Nolan would not be happy about. So let's move on. let's segue right to that. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Nolan in Oppenheimer has hinted at that the ending of Oppenheimer is more akin to the ending of uh, Inception, meaning it's very complicated and probably ambiguous. Ambiguous. So I know absolutely nothing about this movie. Is it supposed to be like an old war movie? It, I think it's like? about it's about the guy who invented the nuclear bomb, which yeah. was so. It's going to be about the Manhattan Project. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think it's supposed. To, I feel like he's going to go for like existent, existential dread vibes, meaning like we could all die at any moment type vibes because we all have this weapon that is more powerful than we can comprehend. So oh, yeah, there's, there's that's definitely. that's what he's going to go for. And it's going to be a bummer of a movie, I think. I think it's going to be really well done, but it's just going to be a bummer. We're just going to think about how we could just decimate the human race in a matter of minutes. And it's just like, wow, why did I watch this? You know, you like, think- I can't I can't turn off the nuclear bombs. Thanks, Christopher Nolan. You just gave me <laughs> new things to worry about. I guess I will uh, join Greenpeace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. <clears throat> James Gunn. Says all superhero movies suck. Not really. Is, he he is, said he said recent superhero <laughs> movies are lazy. It's just now at this point that Marvel dominates the superhero scene, and they all have the Marvel formula. It's all the same kind of movie, and it just so, and it's so noticeable now because who's putting out superhero movies besides DC? Marvel. One company dominates the space and just keeps dope doing the same thing for each uh, origin story over and over and over. Like you yeah. can only do that so many times. Yeah. They've kind of would... like, they kind of mined the oil field and now it's dry. Right. Honestly, if Marvel ended at infinity war, um, like if they ended with the defeat of Thanos, that would have been the greatest superhero saga set of movies like ever made. And if they just right. left at that, that was them at their peak and to continue now, even to try to make, like, a whole nother, I guess, what, phase or whatever, like, that was really just pushing it. They really should have no- known when to call it quits. Because that was yeah. 10 years worth of yeah. movies that yeah. added up to something. Yeah. It's like having a funeral of someone you really loved, and then immediately after, someone tries to throw a party. You're yeah. like, oh, come on, dude. Just, oh, we haven't even put him in the ground. Let us have a moment to mourn. This great, this great person, and then they're like, "Nah, we, we, do you like this person?" Yeah, I honestly don't know what's gonna happen because it's clearly they're slowly not making as much money as they used to. So I think it'll it'll be a slow fizzle. It won't be like, "Oh, we just canceled all of our." I guess it depends on the. I don't know case. with the way things are working out right now. It looks like Marvel might. I mean, I'm not saying Marvel's just gonna say screw it and then be done, but there's already so many projects that they've canceled and pushed off. I yeah, wouldn't right. be surprised if at one point sometime next year they just decided to call it are you very excited i know we got some fans in the house one piece live action oh god no david (laughs) has read every single one piece known to man right yes i've read every chapter and all the little david's getting tickets to go see this movie (laughs) yeah to my my couch (laughs) on netflix you know what i'm gonna you know, I don't have much faith in live action anime. Adap- why is that, David? No, no, no. Tell me why. Why? All right. So an anime is an interpretation of like the manga. And it's like they look this, they look similar. So it's like if you'd enjoyed the manga nine times out of ten, you're, you're most likely going to enjoy the anime because it's just like breathing life into the drawings that you have come to enjoy. And I feel like live action anime adaptations it's like looking in a circus mirror that like distorts it you're like this kind of looks like what i enjoy but it's Mm -hmm. completely off you mean i think uh, yeah sorry go ahead i just think i think there's an there's an absurdity that you can uh believe in and kind of suspend your uh disbelief in cartoons it makes it enjoyable uh-huh. And as soon as you see like actors doing those like very expression anime faces, you're like, this kind of looks a little, a little cheesy. I'll up you real quick, David, just to say that I think live action can be done. 
because name it one. has name been one. done. Name, R- it. name R- it. Name it. Roroni Kenshin. The live action. R- R- the live action I, I Roroni Kenshin name. movies are some are some of the greatest live action movies. They also made a live action Full Metal Alchemist movie. But reminder, these are all Japanese made films made by Japanese studios who understand the culture, the art, That's the true. direction. They understand that. With something like One Piece on Netflix, it's just oh hey, we're just fans and we're just gonna adapt it as because this and it, they do it in the way they want. Not and it's not treated the way it should be. It's not given the reverence or the respect it deserves. The, for One Piece, the only saving grace that I can give it is that the creator is a part of the process. Okay. Yeah, he's getting to like final approval. At least that's what they say. That's what the press release. Yeah. Or, or is he just collecting a check? Could be. That's, I mean, it's possible. Says, says Netflix, ten million dollars. <laughs> just like, he says, this is the best. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. This is better than Cowboy Bebop and Roroni Kenshin. <laughs> My biggest concern every time is always who's the cast, and I have to say that the person who plays Luffy does not fit the role at all. Um, yeah. The only person who kind David, of fits David, the do role. You agree? Do you agree? I don't, I haven't I've never seen him act so I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen him act, but based off of what I've seen in the trailer, I I just don't like him. Like on looks alone, you don't like him. On looks and voice, the way he okay. just the way I've heard him in the trailer, uh, I I don't know. It's hard to describe exactly because it sounds like he's always like the way he talks is very disjointed. Where he's like we are going to get the one i'm like so are you a, like i feel like they're trying to make him a hispanic voyager which i don't want to sound mean on saying because he's apparently mexican he's but brazilian. It, he's brazilian okay but it okay. sounds like he doesn't actually have a full grasp of the english language and i uh-huh. i feel like that's already a barrier of its in and of itself you know like yeah yeah let's let's move on before nick cancels himself yeah right <laughs> just so we all agree i love i love the i love the portuguese and the brazilian people i'm not trying to offend you all i just don't think this guy's a good choice for this just cut this cut this part out so i watched the whole series because the new one was coming out mm-hmm. evil dead rise so i watched evil dead one two army of darkness didn't watch ash versus uh, Ash first the yeah, Evil that's Dead. the TV show. Yeah, I didn't TV watch the show. TV show because I was like, I'm not committing to that. Mm-hmm. And then that's I watched a commitment. Yeah, I watched the reboot, and then I watched Evil Dead Rise. Army of Darkness is like my favorite. I was like my favorite as a kid, but that mm-hmm. tends more like comedy. Uh, the first two strike that perfect kind of wacky camp horror. Mm-hmm. What like what ju- made Sam Raimi popular? Yeah, it's like just low budget enough, just kind of like B off. level. Yeah, it's like just above B level where it's like this is going to be called classic and it's not just trash. The one thing about the new movies that I like the most, it seems that they're focusing more on the books themselves and the lore instead of um Bruce Campbell's Ash character. Like he yeah. became like the figurehead <clears throat> and all of the stories revolved around him and his adventures. I love Bruce Campbell. I think he's a great actor. He's perfect for the role of Ash. But I'm glad they're they're not tying themselves to an actor, or at least seemingly so for the first these the reboot and Evil Dead Rise. Cause now they can go anywhere. Yeah. They can go to the future, they can go to the past, they can go in all sorts of different directions and really explore this the deadites and the mm-hmm. and the books well, let's go to any time period that this book and then the dead i'd show up in and just see how these people of this time period deal with it like let's see how like feudal japan deals with it and then you know like cool. 2968 yeah, cool. deals with it in the future because they could be like we have all this technology oh no the living dead yeah <laughs> like now so what i understand is that you actually liked evil dead rise because i saw evil dead rise too and yeah, I I enjoyed it. I don't I don't think it was, it didn't it was not my favorite Evil Dead. Evil Dead Two is my favorite because it's mm-hmm. just so out there and ir- experimental and just so like balls to the wall crazy that it's hard for right. me not to enjoy it. Whereas this Evil Dead Rise to me played it more out of the book of the Evil Dead, pun intended. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just pulled out the tropes that you usually see in an Evil Dead movie. That's true. There's a lot of like callbacks and homages, 
but if you enjoy the Evil Dead series, like for like the out of like off the cuff, like really out there stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, you're not gonna get that in the new movies. You know they're gonna reboot Nightmare on Elm Street, um, and, and Friday the Thirteenth. They're gonna do that. You know they are surprised because they tried to re they made a reboot of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street in like 2013, 2014, I think it was. And they, they just made the, yeah, they made a new one, like an updated one, and then that was it. They just never did anything with it. I think with Nightmare on Elm Street, it's tied so much to Rob, Robert, Robbie, Robert, yeah, Robert. to yeah. Freddy Krueger. That same with same with Hellraiser. It's tied so much to the the guy that was doing playing Hellraiser. It's it's hard to say like, all right, we're gonna reboot it, but that person's no longer. Like like Candyman when we saw Candyman. Oh, Tony Todd, baby! No one, no one can replace Tony Todd. You just can't compete with that voice, baby. There's no, there's no way. And that man had bees in his mouth, live bees. In yeah. his right, mouth. my there's man no had bees in his mouth. No fear. He got paid like two thousand dollars per bee sting. That is a fact. Look it up. He is the man. This has been the spooky screen. Thanks for. Hang in with us. Thanks for listening to us. Johnny would be mad if I didn't say this. Subscribe, comment, like. It helps a small show like us who have full-time jobs and don't make any money from YouTube. So all those little things mean a lot to us. So thank you and so long.